Today we're going to disassemble the Samsung Galaxy Note. This is the N7000, which is the overseas version. I can't imagine it being that much different than the US uh, version of the same device, but if you guys find otherwise, please let me know and I'll change the tags in the description. Uh, until I come across one, I will keep it, things as is. So let's start by removing the rear panel off of the Note. Remove the battery. Of course, if you have a SIM card or a micro SD, go ahead and take those out at this point also. And we're going to have the screws holding the panel onto the back here. So go ahead and take those off first. And then we will begin the fun part. This is actually not too difficult to disassemble. Fortunately, it's a large device. And it, when it comes to most cell phones, it seems like the bigger they are, the easier they are to work on although a lot of the components on the inside are still going to be the same as far as flex cables and that kind of thing goes. But you do have a lot more room to work with this, and it has that lovely design where the lens and LCD are one piece. So if you break any of the glass on this, you have to replace pretty much the entire front half of it. You can see I'm going to start by prying down in the bottom right-hand corner here, try and get under that with a few different pry tools. As usual, apply heat liberally if necessary. As long as the LCD is already damaged, you really can't do too much um, additional damage with the heat. But as a general rule, I like to keep in mind that if the heat is too hot for your hands, then it's probably too hot for the device and you might end up melting something. So keep that in mind. Uh, we got underneath this part relatively easy. Not, not really any adhesive as I remember to deal with, just kind of breaking this apart. Uh, by going underneath the glass and that rear panel will pop off of the back. There might have been a little bit of adhesive here around the top. Or it might just be clipped on there. It's been a while since I did this so just go a little bit at a time. The more time you take the safer you're going to be as far as not damaging anything. So once we have the back panel off, there are several flex cables that you need to disconnect. Uh, an antenna wire, you can see I'm going to go through and point out each one individually. So take a very close look at this. As usual, before you pry anything, make sure you have everything disconnected. Don't want to end up buying more flex cables, especially on a newer device. So they tend to be not only pricey, but also hard to get a hold of sometimes. You can see we've got quite a few things to disconnect here. And then we've got a couple of screws, if I remember correctly, probably two that hold the logic board in place. So once we do that, this will pop out, no problem. Set that aside. And you can see I'm showing the replacement LCD here that we're going to be installing onto the front. You can see how everything matches up. Interestingly enough, the replacement module only has one major uh, flex cable here, whereas the original has two. And I'm still not sure why that is. But you'll see that um, in the next video that everything works fine once you put it together. Now the antenna assembly down here at the bottom pretty easy to remove and I, pr I would recommend just go ahead and removing this entire piece at this point. I left it on uh, the first time I took this apart because I wasn't sure if we were going to need to do that or not but it does come off relatively easy. Go ahead and uh, take a few screws. I think there's about three or four screws on the bottom here and they're connected to the antenna wire. This little white piece will pop off and everything that's underneath there you can go ahead and take off if you like. Make sure it's not connected to anything. I should have done this at this point, but I wasn't sure if we wanted to leave that or not. So you can see that'll come right out there. Just uh, bring the antenna wire with it. And what I'm pointing out, I believe, at the bottom is, uh, once again, to be very careful with the buttons. 
Um, there's no adhesive on the replacement unit. It's actually all on the midframe. So this is just a soft rubber piece that's underneath there. It helps to cushion it. So we're going to apply some heat here before we start prying the glass off. Once again, keep in mind, Samsung likes to put adhesive underneath that bottom row of keys on the touchscreen. So your home button, your back button, your menu button, etc. Those things can often have a flex cable that's adhesive to the glass. If you don't get underneath the glass or between those two parts, you can easily tear that cable on the bottom. Then you're going to have to end up buying one of those also. So anytime you're working with a Samsung Galaxy or any Android dev device for that matter that has those bottom keys, be very careful when you go in here um, after you start prying. When you get to the bottom, just try to take a look down in there from the side and see if you've got adhesive holding them together. If you do, you want to be really careful because they like to tear that whole flex out if you put too much force uh, or apply too much force when you're um, removing it from the midframe. So you can see I'm using a liberal amount of heat here. Heat is your best friend when you're working with adhesives and trying to remove something without breaking it. And of course you want to also be sure that you take care with this home button if you do happen to have the uh, N7000 that you don't damage that in the process. So I just like to take this part very nice and slow. You can see I have my pre-dulled razor blade. This is not a sharpened blade. I want to point that out. I don't use sharpened blades when I'm prying, but I do find that they get in small places. So if you pre-dull the blade, you'll have a very small edge that you can get between a lot of things with easily. And of course here I'm just using the pry tool, looking down on the side to try to see where the buttons are. I didn't have too much trouble with this one. But again, as a rule of thumb, it's a great practice to keep in mind anytime you're working with Samsung. They just love to stick that stuff together. And they use, they use a uh, conductive paste that you want to try to preserve as much as possible. Do not wipe the surface clean before you put the new lens in because it's very important to keep that conductive paste intact. Otherwise, you might have problems later on when you try to use those buttons. So here I'm prying across the top. Uh, again, this video is in real time. I wanted you guys to get an idea of what it actually takes to get into here. So I'm not time lapsing very much. This is the actual, uh, pretty close to the full length amount of time that it takes to disassemble this. And this was my first attempt. I hadn't worked with this device before. So I think all things considered, considered it wasn't too bad. I got it apart in about uh, 15 minutes altogether. So I did time lapse the part where I'm removing the screws. It's really boring. You don't need to watch that, obviously. And you can skip ahead here at this point if you want to. Um, just be really careful when you're prying this apart. I had something here. Oh, there's a little piece there at the top, I think, that I pried out. You can see I'm just work, kind of working down the sides here. You can see I have a pry tool stuck in, or guitar pick basically is what I'm using, uh, stuck into the bottom. Once you pull the adhesive up, I like to wedge something in there so it doesn't go back on. And, uh, you know, the more times that you pull it apart and put it back together, the less effective your adhesive is going to be. And you can see I moved on the left-hand side there. I went ahead and removed that antenna assembly from the bottom at this point. So, um, again, at this, uh, for this particular device, the first time you disassemble it, the adhesive's very strong. Uh, you can usually get away with reusing it. I don't like to remove the factory adhesive and replace it unless necessary. Um, so I try to pull up the lens and LCD, keep them away from the surface because you probably familiar with anything that's tacky or, or sticky. The more times you remove it, replace it again, uh, the less strength that you're going to have. So eventually you might end up having to replace that adhesive. And it's hard to find too many things that are as good as the one that comes from the factory. 3M adhesive I find works pretty well in most cases. You can see I'm just really taking my time down here being careful to make sure that wasn't stuck to the buttons. And again, on this particular one, it came apart without too much trouble. You see everything's intact here at the bottom. And the factory adhesive is still very strong. 
including everything on that panel on the inside there. That's all going to be sticky when you go to uh, install the new piece. Now you see that flex cable there I'm touching with my thumb. It is completely absent from the replacement LCD. Uh, however, once I installed everything and uh, reassembled it, it worked fine. So I'm not sure at this point why they have two different flex cables. 